Thank you for downloading the latest edition of BBC Radio's From Our Own Correspondent. On the much smaller island of Malta in the Mediterranean, the local bird hunters have a fractious relationship with a large part of the island's population. The hunters say what they do is part of Maltese tradition, a way of life passed down the generations. Others say the practice is cruel and should be stopped. Mario Cacciotolo went to visit one man's bird sanctuary to understand more about the complex relationship between killing and conservation that exists in the country. My link with the world of hunting began when I was a boy growing up in Malta. I'd frequently pop in and out of my next-door neighbour's home, a small but impeccably neat house occupied by Doris and her husband Joey, who has been a hunter all his life. As soon as you enter, you're greeted by a line of tall cabinets, filled with glassy-eyed birds, both common and exotic, long-stuffed in a range of poses, no longer flirting with the wind and roaming the skies. There are two hunting seasons in Malta, spring and autumn, the spring one being restricted to about 20 half days in April. It was this season that was subject to a recent referendum brought about by a public petition calling for spring hunting to end. But the pro-hunting lobby won, just, with 2,220 votes to spare. And so the shooting continues. In many ways, Joey represents the complicated nature of Malta's relationship with nature. For the past 20 years, he has run Ducks Village, built across the road from his house in the town of Xira. This collection of huts, pens and even an old boat dragged ashore is gathered on a scrap of land by the harbour's edge. In the nooks and crannies that Joey's fashioned from wood and stone live all sorts of animals, not just birds. There are, of course, ducks in residence, along with chickens and geese, guinea pigs and guinea fowl, rabbits and hedgehogs, the odd kingfisher and spoonbill. There are even cats living among the many pigeons who have gatecrashed the party. All this has been created in Joey's own time, with his own hands and largely funded from his own pocket. Joey, a jovial bald man with broad shoulders, strong arms and chunky hands, tells the story of two loved-up swans living in his village, which paddled about on the sea together. Then one got killed by a passing speedboat, and the other died a few days later of a broken heart. Joey had it stuffed, and it now sits above his front door, looking a bit cheerier than it did in life. The birds in Ducks Village are completely at ease with Joey. He picks up a goose for a photograph, and it nestles into him like a comforted child. There's another bird. He claims it's the product of a goose and a duck mating, which he's named Gorgeous. Joey hoses it down and the two play together in the spray like best friends. But still, for all the work Joey does to look after these birds, he also loves going out during the hunting seasons, taking his beloved gun dog with him. It's called Oo. Once upon a time, Joey would hunt regularly. But now he sighs and says that despite being retired, he doesn't have time to pick up his gun nearly as much these days because he's too busy looking after Duck's village. As passionate as he is about caring for his feathered friends, he still likes the thrill of tracking a wild bird, being out in the countryside with his beloved dog, using his skills to kill. There is no confusion in his mind, nor that of other hunters, between their passion for nature and their urge to shoot wild birds. Joey isn't the only hunter who talks about his contribution to nature. One of the main Maltese hunters groups is called the Federation for Hunting and Conservation. Hunters also say they look after the countryside, clearing rubbish, mending fences and pruning trees. Naturally, not everyone subscribes to this point of view. The campaign to end spring hunting was a loud and passionate one and the referendum defeat came as a bitter blow to many Maltese. Conservationists and celebrities, both local and foreign, such as prominent bird-loving Britons, Bill Oddy and Chris Packham, claim species of migrating birds are threatened by the killing 
and joined in the campaign for the guns to be silenced on the island. And indeed they were, much sooner than expected. After the referendum, this year's spring bird hunting season opened, but was closed four days early by Malta's Prime Minister, after several protected birds were shot illegally. This is only a temporary reprieve, for the guns will fire again come the autumn. But all year round, Joey and his birds will live, as a hand-painted sign at Ducks Village says, together in harmony. Mario Cacciotolo and the birds of Malta, both live and stuffed. Time for us to fly away too, but do join me again for more from our own correspondent on Saturday morning at half past eleven. Goodbye.